Hi, I'm Mana Abraham. Today, I'll walk you through the impact of trauma and the six steps that you should know to recover from trauma. So the reason why you should be watching this is firstly to understand what is the impact of trauma and how you and your mind and your body, how they travel through these effects of trauma and what should you be doing or knowing to understand the six steps to recovery from trauma. So when someone is impacted by trauma, whether it is a complex uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or a catastrophic event, or it can also be a minor event, but the impact of trauma is not dependent upon the scale of event. It is dependent upon the scale that an individual is affected. So here on the impact of trauma, the very first time when a person is experiencing a traumatic event, it does not matter how big or small it is. If in that moment that person is experiencing shock or a shame, at that point of time, they're frozen. That time is frozen in their minds and there they create this traumatic memory. The moment the trauma is stored in their body, so I repeat this here, the very first time when you experience trauma, it is stored in your body, that shock or shame. At that point of time, what happens is an individual may not be wanting to talk about it and they deny even acknowledging that they experienced something catastrophic or a traumatic event. At that point of time, what is required is for them to talk instead of hiding the experience because natural tendency is not to talk about it. Once, that ex the, once they experience the shock or shame and when they store this traumatic memory, based on the traumatic memory, they start building the model of their world. And based on that model, they assume a trauma identity. That assumed trauma identity is quite different from a normal identity. Again, the normal or assumed, they're just to differentiate how someone perceives the world because a person who experienced trauma views the world totally from the traumatic experience itself because it's almost like they're wearing that colored glasses and they start seeing the world only as that colored, through the colored glass. So as a result of this assumed trauma identity, who they have become and how they perceive the world is quite different. And if you are not addressing this assumed trauma identity, or if you are addressing this assumed trauma identity from a normal identity, you will not be able to understand the model of this world because it's almost like you're a scientist and an artist coming together and trying to understand each other. They have completely two different worlds. So as a result of creating that assumed trauma identity, it can be somebody can take advantage of me or I am not safe or I'm not a good person or I don't deserve this. Any of those identities as a result of this assumed trauma identity and the model of the world, they start experiencing this internal and external triggers. Quite often we think the triggers are external because we experienced it externally, but the truth is as much as the body experiences the situations outside, it also internalizes the same way inside you. So there are internal external triggers. So anytime this individual experiences or believes or feels there is a threat, a perceived threat to this assumed identity, trauma identity, then they experience these triggers. And those triggers are based on how close they are in time and space to that traumatic memory that they have frozen in that shock or shame. Then based on these internal external triggers, they manifest as the negative patterns or behaviors. And that negative patterns or behaviors, you're only looking at it as a behavior or a symptom or an, as an attitude, or it may be a winning attitude or a losing attitude. But those behaviors, that negative patterns are truly dependent on the assumed trauma identity and how they created their world through the lens of traumatic event. And these negative patterns and behaviors, when they're constantly repeated, what happens is that forms the character of an individual and that can result in a stuck state or through or self-sabotaging relationships or changing jobs or driven uh, to be something or someone or cannot be calm and peaceful, constantly restless. So these are all the stuck states and the repeating patterns. So we can never judge a person based on their repeating patterns or how they uh, how they dress up or how they are organized or how they are not organized or how 
kind or how unkind they are, you should understand they are all stemming from this assumed trauma identity as a protective mechanism. And this impact of trauma is not only mental, it is also physical because people create diseases in their body because they cannot say no or they cannot ask for attention or they want to constantly protect themselves by not moving out of their homes or by not coming, stepping out of their organizations, wherever they are, they create a very static environment so that they are constantly safe and protected, even if it is detrimental to their growth or progress. So once you understand the impact of trauma, now it is important for you to know what are the six steps to recover from trauma. Quite often people I come across, they say they've been doing a lot of work on themselves and they've been working on the trauma for decades and still they continue the triggers. And you should know why they continue to experience those triggers in spite of working for years and years in resolving those triggers or on working on those traumatic events. So the six steps to recovery, the very first step you have to understand is to resolve the expressed emotions. So what happens is when an individual with the first impact of shock and shame, right in that moment, they have chosen without their knowledge, a level of expression. And that emotion is what is constantly they, they keep expressing, but they don't know why that is such an expressed emotion. Can be anger or a natural state to become sad and teary or withdrawing naturally. So these are all the expressed emotions and their active emotions too, which, are, which you allow to come to the surface. So the very first step to recovery is to work on these active expressed emotions. And only by working on these expressed active emotions and resolving and healing these emotions, you will be able to minimize the trigger of the traumatic event itself. Then once you are able to resolve and heal these expressed active emotions that you are consciously, subconsciously allowing them to come to the surface, only by resolving them, you as a therapist or a coach can help you to resolve the suppressed emotions or memories because the triggers are simply traumatic memories. And they can be bio memories, physical memories, or mental memories. So these, the second level, the second step to recovery is to work on those suppressed emotions or memories because once you allow the expressed active emotions and once you help see them, then once you resolve them and you become aware of them, and once you release the memories associated with that expressed emotions, only then you will be allow, allowing yourself to bring up the suppressed emotions. Those suppressed emotions and memories, they have such a powerful impact and they're quite deep, deeper than the expressed emotions. But you will be naturally being triggered by these expressed emotions because that is a distraction that you create so that you can avoid these suppressed emotions and memories. And then the second step when you're working on these suppressed emotions and memories, and once you resolve them, they are deeper ones. And once you resolve those suppressed emotions or memories, only after working on those bio memory and a physical memory, and to some extent on a mental memory, the third step to recovery in the process is the identity conflict. The identity conflicts are any person who is experiencing trauma or experienced trauma and experiencing the triggers of the traumatic event itself, they create multiple personalities. The expression of that identity conflict are your internal conflicts. These internal conflicts are, again, the surface symptoms. You're constantly asking, why do I do this? Why am I self-sabotaging? Why am I not pursuing what I want? So who am I? So these are all the different conflicts that you will be experiencing, which are internal conflicts, but you have to realize those internal conflicts are an expression of your identity conflicts. And once you resolve the internal conflicts through your values, through your beliefs, through your choices, perceptions, decisions. So once you're working on your internal conflicts, then the last step over here is the outward expression. So these expressed emotions, suppressed emotions and memories, which are bio memories, physical memories and mental memories, and the identity conflicts and the internal conflicts, which are your meanings of the mind. They all result in an outward expression. This outward expression can be anxiety, grief, depression, jealousy, sadness, regrets, 
these outward expressions result in a stuck state that you're not able to move forward. However, what happens is the people, as I said, when normally when they're working for years and years on the, themselves in the personal development or self-awareness space, they're constantly working on this outward expression. And it's as though you're trying to move, push a car while you're sitting with your brakes on because you do not want to move because the reason why you cannot move from here is not dependent on the how stuck you are or what goals you have or what purpose you have. It is not dependent on that. It is dependent on these expressed emotions, bio memories, uh, physical memories, suppressed emotions and memories, which can be mental memories also here. The conflicts, identity and internal conflicts, they constantly keep you stuck in this outward expression. So as much as you think you're working with someone and making progress, making those small goals, small outcomes, small achievements, it's an elastic band effect. The moment you make one, take one step forward, it will go right back to the uh, expressed emotion, this state of triggers. So can you now see the need to really uh, understand trauma from mind, body, energy, and spiritual perspective is quite a key and is important for you to recover from trauma. And you have to, when you are ready, start with this very first step to recovery, the expressed emotion. And once you are able to see through the six steps to recovery, what is important for you to understand is these are the six aspects of really living a life beyond trauma. So first, what we do is we dissolve the triggers. Then we release the emotions, which is absolutely body oriented. And you can have some somatics in there, but also you're exclusively working on memories stored in the body. Then the next step is to work on the mind, where we work on identity alignment, because identity conflict is a, a major uh, block for many people. And then we work on disrupting your patterns, which are nothing but the repetitive behaviors that you have created. So we work on the mind. Then we focus on living by intention and life in integrity. So here with the body and mind aspects, you need to work on healing yourself from the trauma. And the moment you step into this third area of energy, living by intention and life in integrity, you will be able to take responsibility for yourself and you will be able to move forward. Thank you for watching.